In this video, we're going to give you a short guide to working with the 3D view in Aspire. The 3D view is the part of the program where you can see 3D components and various types of toolpath data. We'll show you some of those in a moment. First, we'll just go through some options for manipulating the view. Up in the top right hand corner here, you can see there are some small icons that I can press which are going to affect the position and orientation of the part as I see it here. This icon here is going to give me an isometric view. If I click on that, then it's going to spin the part around so that I can see it from the front left hand angle. I have the option here to look directly down the z-axis, here to look directly down the x-axis, or here to look directly down the y-axis. If we go back to the ISO view here, I also have the ability to dynamically move and position the view. If I come into the view here and I press down the left hand mouse button and move the mouse, then it allows me to rotate the view around, or as it's known, twiddle the view, so that I can get it to a different angle and position. If we wish to pan the model, in fact move it left to right or up and down, you hold down both the left and the right mouse key and then move the mouse and we can move it up, down, right and left. And this is very important because when I zoom in, which you're going to see in a minute, it will zoom in to the centre of the screen. In order to zoom in on the object, we have two choices. We can right mouse click on the uh, mouse and just move the mouse away from us to zoom in or move the mouse back towards us to zoom out. Or if your mouse is equipped with a wheel, you can roll the wheel away from you to zoom in or roll the wheel back towards you in order to zoom out. If at any point you get into a view and you're not sure how to get back so that you can just see the whole part again, you can come up to this icon in the top corner here which will fit the view and click on that in order to fit it back into your 3D view. In terms of the 3D components, some of which you can see on the screen here, these can be displayed and undisplayed by checking them on or off in the component tree. You can see if we click these then they're just going to be undisplayed. And more information about the component tree and how the components act with that will be covered in a later tutorial. As well as drawing and undrawing them from the component tree, I can also click in order to select them. And when I select an object in the component tree, in the 3D view, it will be highlighted with a red color, as you can see here, as I click through the different items that we've got in the list there. You can also select components from the 3D view by double left clicking on the object. If I double left click here, you can see we're going to select the dome. If I double left click here, then we're going to select the banner. I can double left click in the background to deselect everything. With that option in mind, the order of the objects in the component tree may limit how much ability I have to select from the 3D view. I'll just give you an example of what I mean. Here if we took our base dome and moved it down a couple of notches in the list, we can see it now becomes the more dominant component over the items that are above it in the list. And when I select those, I don't see them highlighted anymore. And that's because when I double click in this area now, the software is considering that dome to be the most important component and therefore it'll select it regardless of whether I click on the leaf or whether I click on the border area here. So this order is going to affect that and sometimes the only way you may be able to select the component you want is from the list. So if we just move that back up again. If we have a component selected, we have another option in the 3D view and that's to double right mouse click over it. And if I do that, we'll get up this menu. The first four options let me change the combine mode of the component. I can show all and hide and even come down and click on the properties in order to get up the properties menu here to make changes to that specific component. This can be very powerful because it means I can select objects based on just having seen them in the 3D view without having to go back to the 2D view to choose them. I mentioned at the beginning that another type of entity that you're going to see in the 3D view is data related to the toolpaths. If we hit F12 now to come over to the toolpath list, one thing we can do is actually display the toolpaths themselves in the 3D view. These checkboxes here, if I switch them on or off, 
are going to actually draw or undraw the specific toolpaths and so you can see the actual lines that the CNC machine will follow when this toolpath is output and saved. Another way you may see the toolpath data represented in the 3D view is when we come to preview the toolpaths and how they're actually going to look when they're machined. Let's select the icon here which is preview function within the toolpath menu and you'll see that our standard 3D view is replaced by a special preview mode. What you can see here is an imaginary or virtual block of material and we can work through our toolpaths in order to see the effects of them as they machine out our block as it's been defined. So if we come up to the roughing here and hit preview we can see the tool going through and cutting that toolpath. To speed things up we can switch off the tool animation, we can go ahead and select the 3D finish and we could select our V-carve toolpath, select the cutout toolpath here, we can even delete the waste material and there we can see a representation of the actual part we're going to get when this is machined. As we close the preview it's going to go back to the standard view which is displaying the components. Again, if we come back and click on the preview, it'll replace it again with this preview mode. So if we're in the preview mode, we see the toolpath previews. If we close this, we just see the standard components. Let's go back to the drawing tab now and show you from the view drop down menu some other options how you can customize what you see in the 3D view here. Let's click on view. We have various different things that we can choose here, um, such as the ability to use a shaded background. We can draw or undraw the origin. You can see the XYZ position displayed in the lower left corner now, if I switch that on or off. I can also draw or undraw the modeling plane. So if I go to view and check that so that it's off, we'll see that's not displayed. And that can sometimes be a useful thing to do if you want to take a snapshot of the image you have here, perhaps to send on an email or to print out to show a customer for a, as a proof of the project. In order to save this image, you would orient the job so that you liked the position it was in and you could see the data you wanted to output. When you're happy with the angle and the setup that you have for it, you would go up to view and save shaded image and there you have the ability to save that image as a bitmap, JPEG or a GIF, as I say, in order to either email or print that out. So there you've seen a quick guide to some of the things you can expect to encounter when working in the 3D view and how to manipulate and control those things within there.